This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Praise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Who is Jesus? Who is this one born in Bethlehem? These are the questions we've been wrestling with these many Sundays, these Sundays after the Epiphany. We've been hearing stories about Jesus and using them to answer these questions about who Jesus is and how his story relates to our story. Speaking of stories, you know, as a pastor, I've found over the years that in all the churches I've served, each church, each congregation has stories that it loves to tell, stories about itself, sad stories, serious stories, funny stories about things that have happened to the people there. The first church I served was a church in Weirton, West Virginia, and one of the stories they loved to tell was about this time when a supply pastor showed up in an unexpected way. Pastor David was his name, and he was scheduled to preach when the regular pastor was away. And so Sunday came and everyone gathered in the sanctuary for worship. While they were waiting for the guest pastor to show up, there was a, a loud roar outside and a motorcycle pulled up in front of the church and parked there. Then a man dressed in dark clothes and a black leather jacket, looking rather scraggly and out of place, walked into the sanctuary and he sat down in the pew with the people. He didn't say a word to anyone and no one said a word to him. And he just sat there. No one really knew what to do. They just shot side glances and whispered to each other. They had never really had a rough looking biker dude show up in worship and they weren't quite sure that they liked it. About the time someone thought maybe they should talk to the fellow, make sure he was in the right place or see if he needed something, the man stood up. He reached into a backpack that he'd carried in and he pulled out a robe and he put on the robe and he walked up front and he said to the congregation I'm Pastor David and you all didn't know what to make of me because I didn't look like what you expected and so let that be a lesson to all of us I must have heard that story a hundred times when I was there as pastor they loved to tell that story because it was memorable, but also because it became this illustration of all the unexpected ways that Jesus comes to us. In the fourth chapter of Luke, Jesus comes in an unexpected way. Now, it didn't start out that way there in the synagogue in Nazareth. Things started out in pretty much a regular kind of way. It's the Sabbath day. 
People gather for worship. Jesus reads the scripture. They hear from the prophet Isaiah. And Jesus sat down. All that is normal. All of it. That's pretty much the way you would expect Sabbath day worship to go. Right up until that very last verse we hear. When Jesus says, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. That's a pretty unique thing to say after reading the scriptures, isn't it? It's as if Jesus says, those words from the prophet Isaiah, well, they were about me. Those words are being fulfilled through me. I am the Lord's anointed. Now, the people who were there in the synagogue that day, they probably didn't know what to make of Jesus and these words. That will become even more clear in the second half of the story. We'll get to hear next Sunday, so stay tuned. But people in the synagogue reading the scriptures and claiming to be the fulfillment of that very scripture, well, that was an unexpected thing. But this is what Jesus did right there in Nazareth. And from that moment on, his ministry is off and running. For as soon as Jesus claims those words of Isaiah as his own, he begins to do just what these words said. And so the next thing you know, Jesus is casting out the spirit from a man who is captive to this evil. And then he heals Simon's mother-in-law who is oppressed by illness. He calls poor fishermen to be his disciples and sends them to preach the good news. And he transforms lepers and paralytics and the blind with mercy. That may be what we expect Jesus to do because, well, we know his story. But let's just think about how unusual a mission his really is. Jesus begins his ministry by announcing this unexpected thing, that he will go to unexpected places among unexpected people, to the poor, the captives, the blind, the oppressed. In Jesus, God is doing a new thing. And yet, the ministry of Jesus is consistent with who God is and what God wants for the world. Wholeness, healing, and restoration. Who is Jesus? He is the fulfillment. The fulfillment, not just of these words from Isaiah, but the fulfillment of God's promise to be for His people. Even the lowly and hurting people. Maybe even especially them. Jesus takes up this mission from God the Father, proclaiming good news, release, and freedom. This pattern, remembering who God has been for God's people, trusting that God will be with us and for us into the future, this is something leaders of Zion have talked a lot about lately. In our council devotions, as we've dwelt in the word of God, at our leaders retreat yesterday even, we seem to keep stumbling upon this idea that the God who has done great things in the past will move in us and through us now and into the future. That's God's story. That's God's story way. I wonder what stories do we love to tell about our congregation? What are the stories, the memories of this church that continue to give us meaning and show us the ways Jesus comes? What are the sad stories, 
the serious stories, the funny stories about what has happened here. What are our stories about the way Jesus does unexpected things among us? This morning we've heard a story where Jesus says, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And I wonder in a way if it is fulfilled for us in our hearing. I mean, isn't that the way it goes? That when we hear Jesus speak in the scripture, somehow, through the power of the Spirit, Jesus is speaking to us, saying, I have been anointed to proclaim good news and bring good things. And now, this is your story too. You are a part of it. Let it be fulfilled in you. <laughs>